Hi there, my friend and friends. People get frustrated with CSS because they feel like the global nature of it is problematic. And yeah, it's different from other languages, but there's a reason that CSS works this way. And there's a lot of parts of the global nature of CSS that actually allows us to write a lot less code. And this applies whether you're writing plain old CSS, using some CSS in JS solution, maybe using something like Tailwind or anything else. If we're authoring CSS in any way, we want to take advantage of how inheritance works. So we're going to dive into this really simple example here just to explore the idea of inheritance a bit, see some of the foot guns that you can run into with it. Not really foot guns because it's rare that you run into problems with it, but just ways that you can, you know, expand upon what you're doing a little bit along the way um, and just write less CSS and make everything more maintainable and easier to deal with. So right now <laughs> things don't look too good. I just have like this simple blog site um, article type thing here. Uh, and here I, I've put a container e thing holding this. Nothing else at all going on. And when all is said and done, we want it looking something a little bit like this. And it's going to give us this, uh, an opportunity to explore a lot of things, even though the layout looks relatively simple. So the very first thing when you're writing your CSS that you want to do is apply as many styles as you can to either your HTML element or your body element. Because if we look at the structure, everything is always inside because we have our HTML here. Uh, and then obviously everything is nested in that and any visible stuff on our page is nested in the body. And there's one area where you can have a difference, uh, which is your font size, whether you put it on your HTML element or your body element. Um, but other than that, basically, if you do it one or the other, things will be inherited. Now, not every property is inherited, and we'll explore that a little bit as well, but it tends to be anything that is typography related. So uh, if we come on our body, first of all, you're gonna have a body selector anyway, because you probably wanna do something like a margin zero, uh, and let's get rid of that, um, which just gets rid of that extra spacing that we always have. And since you're already on the body, this could be a good place to come in and set things like your font family. Uh, and you can see I've already set up a font family here. And we can also bring in a color just so, uh, we, you know, my design didn't use pure black as the text color. So I can bring that in. Uh, and let's just come on this and just change it a little bit just so we can see um, that it really is working. And let's, I should have just gone, we'll go with something that's not too offensive, uh, but we can make it really stand out. Um, and you can see all my text is changing over to blue and it's inheriting through all of the elements here. And there's a lot of different things. I have my H1 here. I have my paragraph. Um, I have a lot. I have my strong. Uh, there are, I guess, not so many things, but elements will inherit the color that they're getting. And this is the same for my font family. If we turn off or let's just come down here and we'll, we'll set another font family just so we see uh, system UI, which is just a saw serif font and all of the fonts on this layout have changed to the saw serif. So setting uh, our font family, our color, things like that. It's very good to set them here. Another one that I tend to like setting, which is typography related, is also my line height. Uh, just because by default, the, the line height's a little bit tight. It's 1.4 by default. So you might want to come up with like a 1.6 or a 1.7. And so actually, let's make our font size bigger there on my H1. I'm going to come in with a few other styles here just to make it really large. Uh, but you'll notice there's an issue here. Uh, well, it's an issue, I guess, but this is a very big font size. So we're getting a very big line height on this. But if I said here, my font size, uh, let's just say font size here is 1.25 rem. So we get a bit bigger of a font size through everything. And then I did this and I want this to be at a two rem because that's what I want it to be for my body. That might be fine for all of this, but it's absolutely destroyed everything else because everything is inheriting this line height of a 2.5 rem, which is definitely not something I want. It's good that it's inheriting it. It can make my life a little bit easier by coming in with a 1.6 or a 1.7 because for the most part, any font size that's between like anything small <laughs> all the way up to like a, like a 1.5, a 2, maybe even a 3, though probably not. But like for a lot of your font sizes, something like this would be fine. And it's when you start getting to the larger font sizes where we have a problem. But this is also where things work. And I've already done this a little bit where I've overwritten a few things. I have a font family that's said here, which is different from this one, because this is, if we looked at the design, this is the one area in the design where I actually want to change what it looks like. And I also want to change the color and I want to change the line height. And this is one of the nice things with inheritance. When things are inherited, you don't ever have to worry about anything like specificity or order or anything like that. Because when something's inherited, it's not actually, it's, it's getting it from an ancestor. So it's not something that's actually directly applied to it. So I could actually take this H1 here 
and I can put it before my body and it's still gonna overwrite anything because here I'm selecting this H1 specifically and I'm changing the styles within it. So one of the beautiful things about inheritance is just that, it's very easy to overwrite. So then I could come in with my color of black here uh, or whatever I want for that to be different. I can come in with my different line height, just it's very large, it's all cap, I need a nice tight line height, things like that works really well. And there's other places we can take advantage of it as well. I want, if we look at the design, we see this area has this and this are both centered right now. And what I see a lot of people do um, is they're going to come on and they're going to give like a tech, you know, class. And this could be with Tailwind. It could be with other things where you have utility class or something where you get a class of text center and then a text center here. I don't have anything in my CSS right now, so this won't work, but I'm just sort of saying people will select both of these to get it to work. And that can be fine and there's no issues necessarily with that, except if you start having more, you know, if you have eight elements in here, it's kind of annoying if you're having to go through and apply everything to every single one of those. So instead of that, we could come and just put a single one on the header. So if you're using Tailwind, maybe you just do header and then have a class of text center on this, and that's gonna inherit to everything that's inside of here. Or, you know, we could just come and say that my header is a text align center, whatever it is uh, that works within your layout. And I'm also gonna add a margin uh, block here, which is margin top and bottom. Uh, let's just make it three rem or something just to space things out, maybe a five rem, um, something like that. Now we're gonna switch our color back over here because let's go back to like the grayish color that I had, which fits more with my design. And we'll notice one thing that's not being inherited is the link color. Uh, and links aren't the only thing, buttons and other form elements can sometimes be a little annoying as well. And we're gonna talk about those in a minute. Uh, but with links and with other things, because even the font size of like my heading, if I don't declare a font size uh, on my heading over here, let's take that one off. If I don't declare that, it's still larger than my other text. So there are certain things that aren't inherited. And that's a really important thing also to be aware of and to see, you know, sometimes a link is something I think a lot of people are familiar with. We know we have to override it. The reason for this though, and this is really important to understand, uh, is if we come in, we take a look in my dev tool. So I just, you know, I'm just coming, I'm right clicking directly on the link, I'm choosing inspect. And then, or you can, if you have your dev tools already open, you can select that and click right on it. And that's gonna open up any style that's directly related to my link right here. And if I come and take a look, you're gonna see that the A has a user agent style sheet and there's actually a color here and it's a WebKit link. It's just sort of, web, if anytime you see something like WebKit link or there's a, there's a few other things like that that look kind of weird. Uh, this is just saying that this is coming from the user agent style sheet. So it's the default from the browser, but they're applying a color to it. And they're also applying the mouse. You can see the cursor pointer on there, which is what changes it to the little hand icon. Uh, we also have a text decoration of underline on there. So these are the styles that are coming from the browser. And we're not inheriting anymore because there's actually a color being applied to this. When we have the paragraph selected and we come down and take a look, and let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit easier. We're gonna see some styles here and there's nothing relating to the color or the font family or the font size, any of that here. There is some margin, there's a few other things. But if I come down, it actually shows me in my dev tools, the styles that are being inherited and they're saying where they're coming from. So in this case, inherited from the body, we have a font family, we have the font size, the line height and the color. It is showing the margin here because this is a style coming from my body, but importantly, this one's not being inherited. So that's why it's sort of grayed out a little bit because it the way the dev tools work, it shows me the entire selector. Um, and then it just says, well, these ones, you know, it's not actually being applied, so it's being grayed out, but these ones are all coming from there. So your dev tools can help you find things. And I know it's really small at the top here, but if we go and select my H1, we'll find the same thing. We see all the styles I've applied directly to it. And if we go down far enough, we will find inherited from our body and inherited from our header because we did that text align center right here. And what that means is if we wanna make changes to certain things like our links that we were just looking at that are blue where they're not getting the inherited colors, it just means like my H1 here where I had to directly apply styles to it, I need to do the same thing here and I can apply whatever style I want and then it will overwrite my user agent style. And I'm gonna jump over to buttons and a few other formy element things in a second because there's actually an easy way to deal with them, but there's some annoyances with them as well. But just before we get to that, I wanna let you know that this lesson is coming from a part of my course, CSS Demystified. That's for people who have learned the basics of CSS and have been using it for a little while now, but aren't feeling 
quite like they've figured it all out yet. And in the course, we go over a lot of the early things we learn, like inheritance and the cascade. But I talk about really, let's remember what they are because you learned about them, but you didn't really take advantage of them too much. You're running into some problems. Uh, and I want to reinforce how we can take advantage of those fundamentals and really like apply them into how we write our CSS. But I also talk about things that we don't hear about very often, like formatting contexts and containing blocks. And I really dive into how CSS works, why it works the way it does, and how we can work with it instead of fighting against it. If you're interested in it, you want to check it out, there is a link just below the video, or you can check out cssdemystified.com. But let's jump back in and fix up these last a few little bits. And I mentioned we were going to talk a little bit about uh, buttons. So what I'm going to do is let's go over here, and I have this button in my markup that I'm going to bring in. Uh, and buttons and buttons aren't alone. We also have like our selects and other things, um, inputs as well. Let's let's just bring in uh, an input here. Uh, type will be equal to text, just so we have um, a little input there with some text in it. And one thing with them is they don't inherit anything. I don't know why. <laughs> um, typography related stuff again is inherited, and we're going to talk about some of the things that aren't inherited in a little bit too. Uh, but you can see that they're really not inheriting. We can bring our font size all the way up. These haven't, everything else has gotten bigger. These haven't changed size. If we look at the font family that's being used in there, it's not the same one that we've, you know, set there. This is my serif font and these are sans serifs right now. Uh, and it just so happens that form elements like your buttons, your inputs, um, I'm trying to think of other ones, but anything that's generally form related for whatever reason, it doesn't inherit our stuff. So there's a simple way we can fix that because in general, we sort of want to take advantage of inheritance as much as possible, like I mentioned. So a very common thing that I do is say a button text area select and take all of these things that don't inherit uh, that I would like them to inherit. And I just say font inherit, hit save, and now they behave uh, exactly the same way. And I forgot my input there. So the input didn't change. If we change that, we'll see it get bigger too. Um, so we list out the things we want here, font inherit, and now they behave exactly like everything else. My font family's matching, the font size has grown, uh, and everything else. Now there is one thing that is not inheriting now, and that would be my color, right? So if I come here and let's just go to, I don't know, some sort of green color. So we change and we see it coming through. These are still black. And that's because I'm taking advantage of the font shorthand here. So it's taking like font family, font size, all of those things. It's not taking anything else. Um, it's just if it's prefixed with font, it is. So it won't take my color, it won't take my line height, it won't take any like a text align center, things like that won't apply. In general, I don't mind that so much because usually these things are a little bit different. But if ever you need to, you could come in here with like, you, you know, inherit. You could set anything you want to inherit and bring them in. Uh, I tend to find that just doing font inherit is enough though, but it could be up to you if you do want to inherit other things. And this of course means that we can also take advantage of inheritance in other ways because sometimes it's really a good idea to say we want to inherit things uh, in specific ways. And I often use this for border radiuses and other stuff where I have a nested child, the parent has a border radius and the child has a border radius. So on the child one, I'll actually set a border radius inherit just so they match all the time. And especially with pseudo elements and other things like that, it can come in handy. Now I did mention there was a difference uh, in the one thing here. I said we set everything on our body, but sometimes uh, there's a few things that you might want to put on your HTML element instead. And this is one place where you just want to be a little bit careful with your font size. Because if you watch this, if I take my font size 2rem from my body and I bring it up onto the HTML this just got really big. <laughs> um, I think my paragraphs might have stayed the same. My containers gotten wider and other things have changed. And I'd be very careful with putting font sizes on your HTML element, just because I generally recommend that you use rem for your sizing of things. And as soon as you change the font size on your HTML element, you've changed what a rem unit is and it can cause a bit of havoc. There's ways of leaning into and taking advantage of that behavior, but especially if you're relatively early on in your journey and you're just sort of getting your feet wet with CSS, I would keep the font size in general on the, the body rather than the HTML. Um, it can, it depends a little bit. If you're doing a small, and I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit here by really boosting it up. Um, so it does depend a little bit as long as you understand the consequence of putting it on your HTML rather than the body. The, you know, you can get away with either one. The one place where you might want to actually move things though is your font family. Now this also comes with a bit of a caveat that we have new units in CSS now that are root units. 
So they look at the HTML unit. We have a root line height. I think we have an RCH for the character widths and other things. I'm not sure about that one, but we, de we definitely have a list of new uh, root elements. So in those cases, you might want to have certain properties like your line height uh, and other things declared on the HTML if ever you do want to use those. But again, you want to be careful with it a little bit because when you change those here, it can impact your site in sort of strange ways. So I find if you're early on in the journey, sometimes it's a bit safer just to stick with putting things on your body. And then once you're more comfortable with what you're doing and you want to take advantage of how some of these behaviors work when you have things directly on your route, then you can start moving maybe a few of the properties over there instead. A quick reminder that if you are interested in CSS Demystified, the link to it is in the description below. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Philip, Andrew, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.